Good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday, guys. Man, I feel like uh, between Daryl and Chris and the song ministry, we can go home, man. We had church, right? We had church this morning already. We got we had church this morning. Um, so yeah, amen, guys. Well, it's good to be back. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for uh, praying for me and my family. It's good to be back up here with you guys on Sunday. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's just nice to walk through the doors and to see Randall. Not Kyle, Randall. Uh, I'm sure I'll see Kyle at some point, but it is good to see you, brother. You know, Randall always gives me the, his trademark water bottle for me, so I'm grateful for him. His, his boy's getting married on Friday. Uh, so thank you to all the sisters that took part in, in uh, making Katrina's bridal shower go awesome yesterday. Uh, it looked like a great time, you know, it looked, uh, looked beautiful. Um, and it just, just, you know, uh, it's exciting to, to welcome our sister here and, and to see them get married. So I, I, unfortunately, because of COVID, you know, it'll be a smaller thing this Friday. But you guys can pray that it is exactly what it needs to be for them and their families and that God makes it great. And that we'll be able to celebrate their union properly uh, sometime in 2021. Amen. So that's the plan, right? Let's see what God does with it. But, you know, with that being said, that, they had the bridal shower. Been a great weekend so far, right? And uh, for those of you new to church, we've been having some good old backyard campfires this weekend at the building. Uh, we've been making s'mores and hanging out. And uh, we had half of the church in the backyard, backyard with us last night. And the other half will be there this evening at 6.30. And uh, I want to thank Daniel uh, for, you know, taking care of the sound yesterday. That was fun. I wasn't even expecting, you know, the, the ambiance of uh, background sound yesterday. But it made our time outside better. And uh, it was cool to have, you know, thank you for, for Chris and Ashley Sneller helping us out with the s'more packages in the morning. And uh, Kevin Eppinger, Carl Herbel, Jeremy Job. Those guys basically, like, took a whole tree. Uh, I don't know if, you, if Carl is Carl's truck still back there with the, with the tree logs. I'm like, man, bro, it's a lot of it's a lot of tree, man. So so I appreciate appreciate those brothers taking the time to do that. Uh, but you know, the whole church always works hard. The whole church gives so wholeheartedly, and uh, it's just been good to celebrate, get some time together, and uh, you know. But we're making s'mores, right? And and sitting by the fire, looking at the stars. Well, there were no stars last night, but we tried, and uh, it's just to celebrate our special missions offering, like Chris talked about, and I uh, appreciate Chris sharing that passage. It is such a challenging scripture. And uh, for those of you, like, like Chris said, uh, that may be new to church today or online, like that's, that's something we do once a year, that special missions offering. And uh, usually like our goal is to, to give uh, 10 times what we usually give on a weekly basis. And we combine those efforts to further advance the mission of God because God is always on mission. God is on a mission. And it's like, hey, are you with me or not? But I'm on a mission to seek and save as many as possible. Amen. And, and so, you know, the money we collect, right, we, it, some of it stays here to help the, the, the missionary needs here for our staff so we can share the word locally, but also goes to plenty of other churches. Uh, some goes to Russia, right, and, and, and some goes to smaller churches here in the heartland, but everything goes to preaching the word of God all around the world, essentially, uh, because God wants more of what we had last night, just s'mores in a backyard, hanging out with people, talking about our lives for as many people as possible. People need that, especially right now. People need times. People need family. Speaking of family, it's good to see uh, our sister from St. Louis, Ronnie Singh, in the house. Y'all know Ronnie's uh, dating, right? You know where he goes to school? <laughs> of all the, we love Perry. God bless Perry's like, oh, I love Lawrence, Kansas. Lawrence, Kansas, the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh, go KU. I love Perry, you know, but just pray for Perry. Ronnie, I'm sure God knew what he was doing, and he sent someone as awesome as Ronnie to date Perry, because Perry needs Jesus. Amen. So, hey, thanks for sacrificing, girl. Thanks for <laughs> No, I love Perry. I love him. That's my guy. I, I give Perry a, he's like my little brother, man, and uh, we give each other a hard time. It makes fun of me for wearing, like, you know, Yankee hats backwards and stuff like that. So it's cool. But, um, you know, Ronnie's, you know, just awesome, man. We love Ronnie, so it's good to have you back. Oh, man. But, uh, you know, last special fellowship International fellowship time we had. I right? was in St. Louis. The St. Louis Church hosted that. It was in Reach. 
You ever remember that? Reach, it feels like maybe not eons ago, as Chris would say. It was like, well, what was Reach? Oh, my gosh. What was, what, what, oh, my gosh, we were all together four years ago. What is this concept of all of us together? Like, oh, what a foreign thing, right? That happened at one point, right? And God, well, it's going to happen again. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember this uh, from four years ago. A big thing, I think starting at Reach, was this thing on our phones called Pokemon Go. And uh, it, it triggered this, this phenomenon of adults, grown people at parks everywhere, just, just you know, and they're throwing their phones to catch these creatures on their phone. It was the most bizarre. I was in Springfield still at the time. And I remember going to parks, you know, we'd have, we'd play Ultimate Frisbee with the disciples there, and there they were, faithfully, just, oh man, this is a Pokemon station, you know, and they're just, you know, it's just like, they're, 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 you can tell, man, people are in it to win it, and if you, if you bother them, it's like, if you're in a prayer walk with a disciple, they're like, you get out of the way, man, I'm trying to catch my, uh, you know, my, po my, my Pokemon here, you know, and uh, it, it was just this bizarre thing, right, looking back on it. But, you know, it, you know, I don't know. I grew up in that era back when it was still on the Game Boy. And the purpose of catching Pokemon, it, it's, it's, it is something interesting. Because the concept of it all is I, I catch this creature and it becomes like my, it becomes my guy. It becomes this thing I train. It's something that I love and it's something that I take care of. And then we become like one. We become, uh, in one sense, best friends. And we... We grow up together, I, that, that, this monster gets stronger and I get stronger and we just rise to the top together with our friendships, kind of like Rocky and Mick if you watch Rocky, you know? And uh, for the, maybe, maybe this for some folks, you know, well, maybe Pokemon's past their time. It's like Rocky's probably a better analogy. But there's something about, man, like, man, that's my guy. That's my girl. We're gonna go through this together. I think there's something inherent in us as people where we need that. We need the, hey, I choose you. You chose me. We're in this together. And maybe I didn't even want to choose you. Maybe you didn't even want to choose me, but man, somehow God lopped us in together. And we got to make the most of this. And then you go in this great with your best friend. Wow, man, God is so cool. I'm, I'm so grateful God gave me this friend that I have, this discipling partner, this person in my Bible talk, this spouse I have, this, this best friend that helps me keep sharp in my faith. I think we crave that. Hopefully this pandemic has reminded us how much we need that. I think it's tempting to say, oh, we don't need it. We just need Zoom and we can just be apart and I don't have to do this and do that because I got technology and I can scroll through all my friends. That's just not true. We need each other. And if you want to do it through Zoom, that's fine, but you got to do it. Okay, I'm like, oh, I, I, and then, then the Zoom can be like, well, it's through Zoom. I don't like Zoom, so now I'm just gonna, not going to talk to anybody. Where's your excuse now, right? We need each other. God chooses us to be in specific places. We need one another, and God chose us, amen? And I think that's in us because God chose us. And sometimes we don't always feel like God chose us, but God did choose us. Our own unique, funny, quirky selves. Some of us around, we know we got some quirks in this room. We probably shouldn't share them all. We're gonna put each other on Front Street, right? But we got some quirks in this room. I got plenty of them, and you guys know those things. You know, we're gonna talk this morning about how, you know, we've been entrusted with a lot. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 25. God entrusts us, first and foremost, with talent. And we're, this morning, we're gonna talk about how God chose us. Tyler this morning is entrusted with talent. God chose us. God chose us because of who we were created to be. We are not an accident. We may have flaws. We may have things about us we don't even like about ourselves. But God sees those things and says, man, my darling, you are altogether lovely, like it says in Song of Songs, right? That's how he feels about his bride. That's how he feels about his people. We are all together lovely to him. So Matthew 25, we're going to look at a famous story about being entrusted here. Hopefully we can glean two things about how God chooses us. Because of who we are, in spite of who we are, but just honestly because God loves who we are. Matthew 25, verse 14. It says, again, it will be like a man going on a journey 
who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another uh, two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Two points this morning about how God chose us. First thing is, first point, God chose us on purpose. God chose us on purpose. There's a reason why he chose us. In the ancient world, it was not a foreign concept for a man of means to delegate important responsibilities and tasks to servants they trusted. This wasn't some random selection of people to do pointless errands. Right? Hey, man, I need you to grab uh, some McDonald's for me. To, you know, just meet me at 8 o'clock. That's not this, right? And we read that it's way more than that. The servants chosen for these tasks were carefully selected by the man going on a journey. In the ancient world, that's what, if, if, so, if a man of means went somewhere, you delegated those things to servants that you trusted. So not only did he carefully choose each servant, the Bible says that from there, the man went on a journey with no express timetable for coming back. Say, hey man, you got it. And like, when are you coming back? You're about it. I trust you. You got it. You're good. This man was willing to entrust all of his resources, his entire estate, his wealth, his influence, his talents, as other translations put it. He said, I'm going to give these things completely to my servants for an indeterminate amount of time. By doing this, this man expresses complete trust in his servants. The man said, hey, I'm going to give them everything I have, everything that's dear to me, everything I own, the things that made me who I am. I give it completely to them. And I'm not even going to set a date. I'm not going to set a deadline. I just trust that when I come back, they're going to make a difference with what I've given them. They're gonna, something special is going to happen because I give them what's special to me. God chose each and every single one of us, not haphazardly, but because he believed that you, yes, little old you and me, that you and I would make the most of that talent and financial resources and emotional resources and influential resources that he's given each of us. God chose us on purpose and not on accident. It's not an accident that guys like Ron Aradonis and Jeremy Job are working at the VA while raising families and trying to share the gospel during a pandemic. God believed that not only would those two men use their finances to take care of others, but they would use their big, loving hearts to take care of others spiritually for such a time as this. Because this is such a time. We know they're both big, big, strong guys, right? You know, Jeremy hits home runs like he's just swatting a fly. Like, pow, you know? I go to Jeremy, I see Jeremy, Jeremy goes, pow, and that thing goes, look, whoa, he launches that thing. It's like routine. It's like, man, must be nice, Jeremy, you know? I hit my, I, hit, I, I do, you know, that's, that's my softball swing. <laughs> Nothing for Jeremy. I thought I knew how to, how to deadlift the barbell until I hung out with Ron Aradonis. 
Oh, let me show you. Hey, Ron, let me show you. And, and Ron's like, that's not how you do it. And, but you know, Ron's so humble. It's way more humble than that. <laughs> but you'd be hard pressed to find guys with bigger hearts for people. Yeah. Both so generous with what they own and their willingness to use what they own, what they have, even emotionally, to take care of others. Makes sense as they're both health coaches, right? They're both just super nurturing guys. It's not an accident that the VA, a place that needs that, would have men like them at a time like this. In that hospital, God knew that people would not just need men who could provide physical healing, but more importantly, spiritual healing. Those are guys who've been given multiple talents, multiple bags of gold by their master, and they're finding ways to multiply what they've been given by investing what God's given them by sharing the gospel with others, sharing their lives with others, sharing their hearts with others. It's not an accident that two brothers with specific relational strengths are working in an environment where those strengths are needed. I was hanging out with Destiny Landsman last night at the campfire. And of course, she stayed with Ron and Leslie and the kids this past summer, and Destiny was like, man, living with Ron and Leslie is the best. I love living with them. I'm so grateful I got to stay in their home this summer. She told me how Ron, her, her and Ron don't sleep very well. Unfortunately, so there would be times, you know, Destiny would go upstairs. Ah, I get up, I gotta get some water. Walk upstairs from the basement, 4 a.m. Right, I'm gonna get some water. And then right at the same time, Ron comes out of his room. He goes, he goes, he goes to the kitchen. They're both going to the kitchen. She gets a drink. He gets something to eat. <laughs> and they're just sitting there, quiet. It's four. No one wants to talk. And they're just like, All right, have a good night. You know. <laughs> Eating there, sitting, drinking, just acknowledging the fact that, hey, you know what? We're family. I'll see you later. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that was funny. But uh, yeah. <laughs> to me, that shows that even with their home having the extra space for the Aridonses, that was not an accident that they had that extra space. Yeah. God chose the Aridonses to have that extra space so they could help Destiny out for a summer. And like it says later on in this passage, right, so famously, they got to share in their master's happiness. Or as Christmas say, joy, right? It's in people. Our joy, our happiness is in people. Because they had destiny in their home. And she literally became part of their household, their family. God chose where we live on purpose. God chose our neighbors, the people we can love and serve every day on purpose. God chose who we work with on purpose. God chose where we work on purpose. God chose who's in our family on purpose. God even chose how much we earn on purpose. It may not be easy sometimes to work at our jobs or to make what we make at work. It may not be easy to, uh, you know, be where we are in our current stage in life relationally. We may feel like things are tight financially right now. We may feel like we just don't even, maybe financially things are fine, we just don't like where we work, I don't know. We may feel like we don't like where our marriage is at. Or we don't like being single. We may not, we may feel like, man, we're having a hard time with our kids. We may feel like, man, I'm having a hard time with my parents. We may not like where we live, we may not like where our career is headed. We may not like where the world is headed. We may just feel like life is hard. And we may question why God has us individually and maybe even collectively where we are at. God, why are we here? What's going on right now? What's going on? Why are we here? Are we there yet? We're in the minivan with God. And God's like, don't ask any more questions. I'm taking us there. <laughs> Just keep, keep asking me. We're going to be somewhere real quick. Not there, but we're going to be somewhere. Don't make, make, yeah, that's right. Maybe turn this van around. <laughs> you can be somewhere if you like. The Bible reminds us today that God has entrusted you with the exact season of your life. Wherever you are right now is where exactly you're supposed to be. It may not be hey, been God's plan A. We may have sinned to get where we are. But God says, hey, you're there because I believe I can give you the tools and the spirit to work your way out of where you are. Amen. He believes that we all, each of us, can make the most of this season. Regardless of where we are, financially, emotionally, relationally, whatever. 
He believes that we all can bloom where we're planted. And he believes in you so much that he goes on this journey and he doesn't look once over your shoulder to make sure you're doing your job right. He says, man, I'm out. I trust you. I don't need to look over your shoulder every day. You ever had like a boss or a coach just, you always felt like they were looking over your shoulder? Yeah, you know, I, 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 remember, I remember that, man. I remember playing ball in high school. You know, I'm not as good as Ronnie. Ronnie played college ball, you know? So, but, you know, I played ball in high school. I had, a, I had my coach always looking over my shoulder. I can't do one thing. I have constantly just sit on edge. That's not God. God's like, hey, you got this. You got this. Hey, you make a mistake, we'll live. We'll live. I believe in you. I'm gonna let you make, I'm, I'm gonna let you play through mistakes. You got this. That's part of your growth. You gotta play through mistakes. Don't worry, I'm bigger than the mistakes. But you gotta play. You can't stay on the sideline. You gotta play. You gotta use your resources. You gotta use your energy. Otherwise, you are shortchanging the process. God chose us for where we are right now because we can make an impact on anybody right now. And guess what? Our hearts can change right now to be more like Jesus wherever we may be. Amen? God chose us on purpose. Let's keep reading here. Verse 19, chapter 25. Actually, we read through the whole thing, right? So my bad. God chose us on purpose, but also he grows us on purpose. This section focuses on 19 through 23, when you have the two servants responding to God's responsibilities to them, right? The first two servants, they double what their master had given them. Pretty awesome, right? And we usually hear the, important, the importance of us making the most of what God's given us in regards to this passage being taught, which I think we'd all agree with, right? But what I also appreciate about God's heart here is that when the servants show him what they've doubled, that they have doubled, excuse me, what they were first given, God tells both of them, man, I've put you in charge. Well, first of all, he says, man, well done, good and faithful servant, right? He's fired up. God's so affirming. But he says, man, I've put you in charge of a few things. Now, I'm going to put you in charge of more. I'm going to give you many the passage teaches us that when we are responsible with what God entrusts us with now, yes, even in a pandemic, we're still entrusted with things. If we're faithful now, God actually grows our ability to do more and handle more if we're faithful to the process of right now. God grows us on purpose. He chose us on purpose because he believes in us, even in the most dire and trying of times, but he also grows us on purpose because he believes, man, there's going to be a day when, Daryl, darling, you're going to need to do more. You're going to be responsible with more. Catherine Smith, you're going to be responsible with more. Jojo, you're going to be responsible with more. God will use those same burdens we carry for God and his kingdom today, right? Because we all got burdens, right? We all got burdens. Our burdens are light compared to what they would be in the world, right? But they're still burdens. God will use those same burdens we carry for God and his kingdom today if we're, if we're faithful to carrying the specific cross that we have that he's put on our shoulders. If we're faithful to that, he will use the weight of that cross to grow strong, healthy, dense, spiritual muscles that before we know it, are able to handle even greater loads. I think for many of us here who have been Christians, even for a couple years, what, a, what was a burden to us when we were first studying the Bible is not even something that we struggled to fight against today, right? It's like, man, I, I, that's cool. I'm, I'm good. Okay, that, that's sin, but I don't struggle with that, praise God. That's something I struggle with anymore. I've grown through me carrying my cross for a couple years. I can handle more. I'm good on that. Now, there's something else I got to struggle with, but what I used to struggle with is not the same. Nate Schrader, I love this brother. I mean, he's grown so much. He used to struggle with not being very expressive and nurturing when I first met him. That's me, him, and Ben's uh, theme word for the year. Nurture. 
Now you gotta be more nurturing. He's like, what does that even mean, nurture? <laughs> he knew what it meant, he's smart. <laughs> he's much smarter than me. The guy's got really good grades right now, amen? But <laughs> glad he does. <laughs> but that guy's changing. You know, when Davion and Lydia announced to the campus ministry that they'd be working with the teen ministry moving forward, I'll never forget Nate. Yeah, they, oh, man, don't start crying on me, dog. Don't, come on, man. <laughs> you know, make me cry. Um, but, you know, Davion shared, Lydia, it was emotional. You know, like, those guys went through war together spiritually. I'll never forget Nate thanking Davion in front of all the college students, tears in his eyes because he was grateful for Davion's patience with him. The burdens of campus ministry. Because there's a, there's a, everybody has their own cross. The cross of that is, man, you, you talk to a lot of people, and a lot of people say no to Jesus. It's a burden. And Nate and Davion pushing themselves together. They're a perfect example. I, I, I wouldn't have chose him, and he wouldn't have chose me, but here we are. <laughs> We're going to make this work. <laughs> By the end, they're crying for you. Oh, man, I love you so much, man. <laughs> I was tearing up too, man. <laughs> Remember, it, it, they shared the gospel with countless students, even when it was hard. And it changed Nate, and it changed Davion. They both grown. The master told the servants, you've been faithful with a few things. Now I'm going to give you more to take care of because you've grown in the process to be able to love more people. Why would I give you more people to love if you can't even love one or two? How, how is this Bible talk supposed to grow if you can't even love the people in the Bible talk? Yeah. Right. Appreciate the Atkins, man. They make it, hey, we're going to love each other. All right? So... Uh, we don't going to talk to anybody else. We just, we're going to talk to each other. <laughs> we're going to tell each other everything we've been through, okay? Don't talk to anybody else about Jesus. We're going to talk to each other about Jesus. I'm like, man, that's revolutionary. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't talk to anybody else until we talk to everybody about, in here about Jesus. I'm like, that's good. I can't give you more bags of gold unless you show me you're willing to use those bags for other people. Otherwise, what's gonna stop you from using that one bag for yourself? You're just gonna be greedy, like Uncle Scrooge, you know? God tells your heart, he says, he, he, he tells us, your heart will never be more like mine if I give you too much right away. If I give you everything right away, you're never gonna be like me. Because even when I, God himself came to earth and did not have any, barely, barely had anything, <laughs> his whole 33 years. You will never, ever be able to love others the way I love them if I give you too much right away. I've come across many people, Christian and non-Christian alike, that sometimes just feel like it's impossible to grow or change in an area or multiple areas of their life. For example, when am I ever gonna be in a stable place financially? And I think it's easy and tempting to wait until we're in that stable place before we start giving a financial offering to God. Even today, as we're collecting our special missions offering, I understand these are trying times. I understand that it can be challenging to give right now more than ever, like we would normally give. And sometimes it's challenging to give, even if there is no pandemic. But God's given each of us what he's given each of us today, even financially, for a reason. It's not an accident. We have to offer what we have back today to God. We have to be faithful with our few, even today. The heart of this passage is that God blesses those who give what they can give. Remember, he says, man, I, you get two. I'm only expecting two bags from you. He ain't, give, he ain't expecting more than what we can handle, right? He didn't say, he didn't tell the guy with the two bags, where's my five? I gave you two, where's my five? No, I gave you two, where's the two? And notice, he didn't say, oh, uh, with the five, where's my 10? He said, five, that's good. He knows where we're at. He understands. And this is not just true of our finances. This is true of everything. He, this is true of every breath he gives us. 
Now, next week, we're going to study out the third servant, the man who gave nothing. And why there are times, and I've been there, we are tempted to not give of ourselves in any way, in any area of our lives. Here's a little spoiler alert. If you've never read the rest of the passage, the heart of it is the, ser- the third servant does not believe that God wants him to grow on purpose. The third servant did not believe that God's heart is to bless his servants. I'm not even talking about some kind of prosperity gospel here, right? I'm talking about God always finding a way to take care of his children when his kids put their trust in him. The third servant does not believe that his master wants to take care of him. Not make him rich, but just take care of him. He says, Master, you're a hard man. That's what he believes about the master. If you are finding yourself struggling to give financially, not just this morning, but on any morning, I want to challenge you to examine your heart. Do you really believe that the father wants to take care of you? Or do you believe the master is a hard man who reaps what he does not sow? I've been there. My God, that's not fair. You didn't do that. And God's like, oh, I did everything. That's how the third servant describes God later in this passage. God's calling all of us to be faithful what he's entrusted to us. But we will not be faithful if we don't think we serve a master who wants to grow us on purpose. Um, I think here's the reality. It's always going to feel like we just have a few things. It's always going to feel like, man, I got a few. I got a few. I ain't got much. Maybe it's not financially, but it's some, in some area of our life, it's always going to feel like we got few. And then, you know, here's what's going to happen, right? If we're faithful, God's going to give us more. Then we'll celebrate for that season. It's going to be awesome, right? We celebrate that. Then we will soon forget that we've been given more. And then we will feel like we have few again. For a time, I didn't know if I'd ever have a kid again. Like, God, I have few, I have nothing. And then he gave us Ruth. And now I don't feel like I have any time. I have few time. I have few energy. I have few emotional and physical energy. I, we celebrated for a time, right? It was great. It was like, oh, yeah, this is great. And then we're still celebrating. It's fun. But, you know, parents, y'all understand. It's, it's few. <laughs> it's a little bit few. <laughs> Got a lot of few going on, right? <laughs> And then you grow, and then you celebrate that. And then the next thing comes, oh, I'm for you again. <laughs> this morning, let's acknowledge that. It's always going to feel a little bit like there's few. But let's be faithful with the few. Amen? Amen? If you don't have much financial to give, give what you have. Yeah. Just give what you have. Trust me, the few monies we do give are going to be much more in Russia, for one. So don't not give. Don't not give. Not just robbing God here, but ultimately robbing ourselves. Ultimately. Robbing ourselves of the process of what happens when we trust in who the Father is. Maybe giving financially is a strength for you. Maybe it's like, I'm good on that. Maybe it's struggling with giving your time. Don't not give your time, right? If you feel like you don't naturally like people, Guess what? You have joined a mighty army of a club. Okay? (laughs) You look at the 12 in that Bible. I don't think many of them like people. They wanted to nuke entire towns. And those were, like, the leaders of the 12. Jesus, can we just nuke them? They don't believe. Let's nuke them. Jesus is like, oh, my gosh, who have I chosen? (laughs) No, you can't nuke them. Like... You gotta love them, man. Like, I'm, I'm about to die, bro. You can't nuke them. Like, many of us don't naturally like people or start off that way, but guess what? Give what you can. Get some time to pray and be open with another disciple. At first, semi consistently if you have to, over Zoom or FaceTime or even a phone call if you have to. Who knows? You may suddenly begin to like people. It certainly happened to many of us. <laughs> I didn't like people. I was afraid of people before I became a Christian. 
Now I'm like, give me two weeks away from people, I start going crazy. And it happened, y'all know, I was starting to lose my mind. Maybe it's your heart. Maybe you struggle with giving your heart. Maybe it's like, I can get with people, as long as we just, you know, broing it up, right? Throwing some, some bags in a cornhole, and we don't talk about anything deep. I'll throw a bag through a cornhole all day. But just when you start asking me, what's going on in my life? Oh, I think we've had enough cornhole here for today. You know, <laughs> time to go home, right? Maybe it's, you just struggle with knowing what you feel or being open with what you feel. Don't not give your heart. Give something. Give a glimmer. Give a sliver of your heart. Just say, hey, you know what? I, I, think, I think I feel sad. Or you know what? I'm just, I'm just struggling. You know what? I, honestly, I want to be open with you. I'm just struggling with being open with you. That, even that's fair. It's like, oh, that, that's good. At least I know you have a hard time being open. That's good. It's better than nothing. That's something. At least it gives me something to pray for. Gives us something to pray. Can we pray together? No, can, you, you can pray for me, though. I'll tell you what to pray for for me. How about that? Give something. Be faithful with the few. There are many, many stories in this room and in on, on the multiple rooms that I watch this online. Of God, how God has blessed the few that we gave. Just a few loaves, right? It was a few loaves, two fish. God did amazing things with that. God always does a lot with a little that he's entrusted with us. God chose us on purpose, amen? Not on accident. He tracked each of us down intentionally. Flaws, warts, uh, you know, uh, quirks, and all. Say, man, I love you, dude. You're kind of funny, but I love you. <laughs> oh, I can't get enough of you. You're the best. You're, I just, I just got to hug you. You're so cool, you know? Even the things that people think are weird, I think that's great. I love you. And, and I'm going to give you some things, and I want you to share those things. Because it's not good for you to have everything. You got to share. You know what? When you share, you're going to see how good it is to be like me. Because I share a lot. The Father shares all. The, the Father shares everything he has. And there's nothing like being like me. You'll discover that. There's no happiness like the Father's happiness. And that's what he wants to give us. He said, come share your master's happiness. Not a worldly joy like Krista, but a real, true happiness that can only come when we believe we've been chosen on purpose and that God grows us on purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you. Amen.